So, ladies and gentlemen, traders, uh, welcome to this afternoon webinar. Today, in the Market Talk series, we have the privilege and honor to host the one and only Richard Friesen. <laughs> um, I assume, and as per my uh, extensive uh, career in trading, and we all know that on the internet, on YouTube especially, there are hundreds and uh, thousands of different content about how to trade, what to trade, uh, if you're going to trade equities, uh, if you're going to take options, uh, any instrument. But when it comes to the execution and what happens afterwards, it's something that separates the great traders from how we like to call them the, the fighters. Okay, so <laughs> uh, I'm sure today we couldn't have any better person in this uh, Market Talk series rather than Richard. He's his experience and only as not only as a trader but as a coach and also uh but with the mindset that you need to acquire and you need to develop to become skillful trader to become successful trader whatever success means to you in trading all right so uh we're gonna have uh, an amazing discussion a very, very interesting uh, interview with Richard today. We all going to learn a lot about this incredible gentleman. And before I start bombarding with questions, <laughs> okay, uh, allow me to say that whatever we discuss and whatever we say, mm -hmm. it's our opinion and it's how we trade, it's how we think about uh, trading and under no occasion it considered as any personal or investment advice or any kind of recommendation and we'd like to be clear on that as for um, this incredible gentleman his name is Richard Fraser. I'm sure most of you already heard his name or you went through his uh, website at some point if you are trading um, a bit long enough so Richard is a creator and developer of the Innovating and Exclusive Mind Muscles program. And with this name, of course, you can find a lot, a lot on the internet on his website. Anyhow, I'm going to share a link at the end of this uh, session with you guys. So you can go and, um, and search a bit more. And the how i know richard is the private conversation with money <laughs> okay that's his book and i think from now we are ready to go richard welcome to market talk series by admirals <laughs> well thank you i'm so excited to be here and when we had a preliminary talk and the questions you asked, I think, are going to really develop into an interesting session here because, you know, you can argue about whether psychology of trading is 50% or 80% or 100%. But we all know that the mindset matters. And what I work on is how can we move our mindset from repeating trading behaviors that don't serve us to being yeah. in the flow, in rapport with the market and ourselves and have a, just a great experience trading. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Richard, um, if you allow me, how long you've been in the industry, how long you are trading? I know that you, as you shared with me, you used to trade back in the, uh, in the merchandise <laughs> on the floors uh, where people used to wear those nice costumes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, yeah, how long have you been trading? What oh, you're what? What you're going to do is everyone's going to be able to calculate how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! We're going to reach until 
45 maybe <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> so yeah I started with uh, Merrill Lynch in 1980 I then went to Chicago I traded on the mercantile exchange the mm -hmm. board of trade and then I uh worked out here at the San Francisco Pacific Stock Exchange where I traded options I built my own trading firm eventually and from there what I discovered was the traders that I hired some of them like a third of them would just use my methodology and just start making money a oh. third of them would do okay, okay but a third of them would struggle and that's where I learned the, and started building the methodology. How do we go from struggle to rapport? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So developing that methodology, did you find out any repetitive patterns among humans or does it necessarily, it, is it a major importance of what sort of academic background some people have in order to be successful as traders? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's an interesting question because on the floor, we would get a lot of PhDs coming down because options are complex. We'd get a lot of uh, academics uh, with a lot of theory around options, but most of them got just blown out of the water. The people who made the most money and uh, got, well, actually some of them would make a lot and then lose a lot. They were yeah. the street savvy, the street smart guys and not necessarily the academics. Because in trading, there is a very visceral market street approach to it. And we've incorporated those experiences in our training and in our, uh, you know, in the work that we do with our clients. Awesome, awesome. So uh, at this stage, to uh, to let everyone know on this webinar, guys, feel free to use the chat box for any questions you want to ask Richard. At mm -hmm. the end, I will leave about 10 to, if there are a lot of questions, we can even go for 15 minutes uh, to go through as many as possible questions we can. So we will answer them. Richard will answer them, not we. I'm the interviewer. <laughs> okay. So uh, should I go to the first um, point sure. of the discussion? Yep. All right. Okay. So here, what are the issues that you face as a trader? And yeah. if you want to click it again, we can start. There we go. Make an impulse trades, miss trades, over trading, repeating the same errors, stress, fear of loss, jumping from system to system, not discipline, letting big losses run, feeling stuck, fear of failure. Oh my gosh, cutting our winners short, lack of confidence, ruled by emotion, afraid to lose money, afraid to pull the trigger and self sabotage. So please note which of these. If they changed, what would make the biggest difference in your PL? And that's what we're looking for. So I don't, you can enter those into the chat box or during the question and answer period, we can go into depth. Wow. So the question now is where do, what do we want? Where do we want to be? And you can go on to the next slide and start the automation. So the traders that come to me, what they want is to enjoy the power of discipline, self-mastery, enjoying the challenge, cutting the losses, letting profits run, trading with focus and flow, feeling joyful, increasing size with comfort, consistent profitability, becoming a professional, setting free from financial worries, managing risk, calm and relaxed, loving the challenge, the joy of discipline, executing your strategy, financial freedom with self-confidence real-time self-awareness and feeling great trading so and persistence and resilience so the question is how do we get from let's go to the first slide you can click it again how do we get from here and the issues that we face to here and click it again Ooh, there you go so this is where i live and breathe what are the issues? How do we do this? And 
it what's interesting is that we started with just behaviors of the traders that I worked with. How can we change their behaviors? And then it turns out that there were just repeated errors that they same mistakes over and over again. They would say, <laughs> swearing <laughs> and say, I'll never do that again. And then there's something that triggered and they repeat the mis same mistake. So then we have to look at the levels of change. And let's go to the next slide and look at the levels of change. And there should be coming up uh, once more. This one? Oh, no. Well, maybe you got the uh, earlier version without them, but I can just go through them easily. This one. There they go. Okay. The levels <laughs> of change. Uh, it, some of my traders, it was knowledge. How do options work? What is implied volatility? What is the difference between the futures and the cash market? So those are just, you know, what are the symbols for a, for a particular futures contract? So then we have skills. How do we use this knowledge skillfully? How do we bid? How do we offer? And below that is behaviors. What behavioral changes do we need to make? And it turns out that they rest on beliefs. What do we believe about the world, the markets, and ourselves? And ultimately, it's on our identity. No one, no trader has ever come to me for private coaching and said, you know, Rich, my identity doesn't support my consistent profits. <laughs> but when we get to work uh, and with the traders that I've trained, sometimes it comes down to a, an issue of worthiness even professional traders of do i deserve this i i my belief is might on an upper level my belief might be that if i become wealthy and consistently profitable i'll become a jerk or my family will reject me i know these sound silly nobody ever believes me but when we look at behaviors that are just re persistent and just cost us so much money we have to look and say what is driving those below yep that's so huge because uh at some at some point maybe now traders are are asking and uh, so are we trading and at the same time we don't believe that we deserve to receive the money yeah so Theo, you can turn off the share screen if you want now. And sure. uh, that way we can uh, have a conversation. Uh, yep. There you go. Okay. So just to repeat one more time, guys, please make sure you write any questions you may have on the chat box. And at the end, we will, Richard will answer all the questions. Yeah. So what, you know, we've discovered is that yeah. there is a methodology. There are steps that we can go through to determine what level of change we're going through. And we have a, a course that does it. Of course, in my private coaching, we do that. So if any of you want to talk about or put in the chat box, what is a persistent trading mistake? We can then start to drill down on what makes those happen. And what the normal uh, answer to those questions, and you've heard this from many coaches, is discipline. You need more discipline. You need more willpower. Yeah. <laughs> and so you say, okay, I'm going to be more disciplined. And you are for a week or a couple of weeks, and then something happens, kaboom. Then we drop down into yeah. a more reactive behavior. So if it's not willpower or discipline, what is it? So we look at the golden keys and the golden keys are first awareness. And we have a, an awareness exercise. And the exercise is to set an alarm if, when you're trading for every half an hour, 15 minutes, hour, whatever works for you. And when the alarm goes off, you say, in fact, I can do that right now. What are my physical sensations? Uh, my stomach's a little tight right now. I'm excited about this. I want it to go well. I want to communicate so much. And my, my head's kind of going. My physical sensation just is a little tight. 
emotionally, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, it's kind of like, I'm kind of a little almost jittery. Uh, my thoughts going through my head or what do I need to say? How can I communicate? So with that awareness, I'm going to say, oh, what would I like now? Uh, so to be here with Theo, to have a great conversation. I notice my voice is getting lower. Uh, my stomach's relaxing. So when we set an alarm, when we're trading, you can do just what I modeled here to look at our sensations, our emotions, and our thoughts. So mm -hmm. that's the first step that we can do. And what that's we notice huge. is, yeah, what we notice when we do that is we can now drop down to a deeper level. Wow. Wow. So the first step that that's huge and we really don't find it um easily this information like the self awareness how do you feel at this moment how do mm -hmm. you um how do what do you think are you really here or are you there <laughs> yes <laughs> do you trade on a way maybe like because it happened to me of course i went through all this stuff um do you trade because you feel bored or do you trade and uh, because you really want to trade and you are serious about the business it's like yeah yeah uh so going through a, a person who who becomes aware of the current situation let's say someone tells okay here i am i'm here in front of the charts I'm ready to execute if my uh, my edge appear and I'm ready to go through. Is it a final stage as you experience with traders? Is it something it needs a lot of practice someone to come to that uh, to that level of um, to that mentality, let's say? Well, the nice thing and the wonderful thing about trading, it is one of the most challenging careers you can pick up, you know, other than maybe combat, battle, being a fireman or something like that. But if you're not in physical danger, this is the most challenging because it requires a master trader's mindset and it never ends. I have hedge fund clients who run major, major hedge funds, and they still run into the same issues because. We all have the same human brain. So it is a continual path of challenging ourselves. And for those people who want, are concentrating on quick money or profits and are unwilling to take that personal challenge, man, it's just like, oh, just, you know, every day you get beat up and you're exhausted and you're stressed and you need to make money. You have this dream about, financial security, about taking care of your family, about helping the world or whatever that huge dream is. And if you have then every tick against you, every loss is a referendum on that huge dream. And so you're just constantly under stress. So what we do is we invite our traders to step into a master trader's mindset. Mm -hmm. So in fact, this is an exercise everybody listening can do. What yeah. is a master trader like? What is his mindset? What are his or her emotions? What are their physical sensations? How do they approach trading? How do they approach a loss? If you can define that, now your brain can start to move in that direction. In fact, we have a guided visualization, kind of like a hypnosis session. It's recorded where you step into that and you step out of it and step back into it so that you can experience what it's like to have a master trader's mindset. And my clients will go, once they step into it, they'll go, oh, wow, that feels better. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Now, we still have the old neural connections, the old triggers and all that. But once we can say, this feels better. Now, this is in contrast to all the coaches who go, you need more discipline. You need more willpower. What we do instead is we invite you into a mindset that actually feels better, honors your values, 
and get you to your goal. So it's a con- constant invitation mm-hmm. to something that feels better rather than setting up willpower and stress. I Like when a client says, I'll try, I stop them and say, whoa, when you say I try, you're yeah. setting up an internal struggle. I need more discipline. You're setting up an internal struggle. Yeah. What if we set it up so that you're setting, stepping into something that feels better? Now, when we do that, oftentimes we'll discover the beliefs, the behaviors, the identity that keeps us from fully stepping into there. But my clients, I always start them by saying, you're a master trader. I believe you're a master trader. That is where we live and breathe. That's who you are. Now, let's occasionally there's things that get in the road. So let's discover those. But this is where we are. So rather than being a struggling trader, trying so hard to become a master trader, let's step into being a master trader and clean up the issues that keep popping up. Wow, that's so, so valuable. I'm, I'm sure everyone is blown away about, from <laughs> this information because it's like instead of going against yourself at the end of the day and mm-hmm. beating yourself up, like, oh my God, I'm a um, very self-driven, uh, I'm a super athlete, or I am great at this field in my industry. I have that competitive nature within me and I'm going to make it in trading. And, and, and these people, I find out, and you tell me if you agree as well, they are in a constant battle within themselves and they just... Yep going around, around, around without being able to step into the, the master uh, trader's mindset. Theo, that is so well said. So well said. So how do we step out of the struggle and how do we step into the master trader's mindset? And there's a lot of processes and exercises. Uh, we, In fact, we have an assessment that includes the, the first of the golden keys, which is awareness. So we have the golden keys. The first is awareness. Let's like where we set the alarm and what I just did. Yep. And I'm going to do it again. Ah, take a breath, relax. Hmm, this feels better. Oh my gosh, Theo. If I just take a moment right now, mm-hmm. check my physiology. Oh my gosh, this feels so much better. So awareness. And then we have uh, acceptance. So we don't beat ourselves up for what we discover. <laughs> we say, oh, that's interesting. And then we can say, now what we do we want? So we have a series of exercises in our online courses that allow you to take a step in for all the major issues that, that traders face. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. Um, it will be interesting to... To ask you this, I'm going to make it with an example, real example from trading, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's say someone is a day trader holding positions Mm -hmm. uh, for less than 24 hours. And it see the price move upwards. Let's make it as simple as possible. Let's say it uses a couple of moving averages price move upward at some point it sees the prices that they are at the top it's already far away from the moving averages and then they see a reversal candlestick patterns pattern okay and at that point that trader is so super focused there and it's the time ah okay i know what i'm doing they have trend following uh system that they work with but because they recognize that and they believe they believe that the price is overextended it's time for the price to move backwards what do they do they sell right but that's against their trading plan their intention is to buy but maybe they feel some emotions that they left out or they miss the move they are in a rush to sell. So they sell. And because they are so sure that the price is going to move backwards, the trend is just keep moving higher. And they start getting in those 
impulse and uh, and I'm not going to call it a nonsense mindset. I'm going to just call it a very destructive uh, mindset. And we see that repeating regardless the time frame, regardless I mentioned a day trader, maybe that's an end of day trader. It happens all the time. So, uh, and those people, they just uh, get confused within their own uh, emotions. So how do you think they have to deal with this kind of uh, attitude slash environment? Boy, you, that, you ask a really hard question, but okay. it's the right hard question. <laughs> So this depends on what context we were in. So I'm going to design one context here. Um, I don't have a lot of trading capital. I have to make money. My father doesn't respect me. I'm going to show him that I can do this. I'm going to show everybody. I'm going to be able to, to buy a big house and a fancy car. I'm going to prove this to myself. And, I, and so, uh-oh. Oh my God, it's turning around. I'm going to give away my profits. I, I've got to prove to everyone that I can do this. I, oh my God. Okay, so then I, I get out of the trade. Yeah. So that's one context. And that context is what we call a hole in the heart, that we need trading to prove something to everybody else and to ourselves that we're worthy. So from that context, can we act rationally and statistically? No. <laughs> My good. So, so here's another context. Trading is a statistical game. I'm a master trader. I know that I'm going to lose 60% of the trades that I make. The 40% I do make, they've got a four to one or five to one win ratio. I am going to lose maybe four or five, 10 trades in a row sometimes when the market shifts its mood and its character and it doesn't match my system. And that's okay. I'm going to have some downtrends. I'm okay as a person. I don't need the markets to make me okay. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. And every time I make uh, a trade according to my system, I know that statistically it's profitable, even though this particular trade may not be. So what I do is I figure out what's this, what on the average every trade makes, even winners and losers, I put them together. And so let's say every trade makes on average $1,000. So it doesn't matter if this trade loses money because I know it's part of the statistical edge I have. Mm -hmm. So every time I make a trade according to my system, I make $1,000. Now, we all know that our brain delivers more pain for a loss than an equivalent gain. That's shown neurologically, and we know that. So if, in fact, we what we call is lousy and lucrative trades, yeah. a lousy trade is that impulse trade in the in the first context where we're trying to prove something, we need to make money, we're fearful, we're panicking, we, whatever that context is, that is a lousy trade. A lucrative trade, on the other hand, whether it makes money or not, that's not the issue, is did we follow our plan? Is it according to even a, an intuitive play that we have? And if that is, then we know that it's profitable, whether that specific trade makes money or not. So we call that a lucrative trade, and we know how much on average it'll make. So we take away this thing of loss by looking at it as a lucrative trade. Awesome, awesome. But you mentioned something uh, here. You said, you, you, you mentioned about a plan. And we see traders, they get into the markets without a plan, a trading plan, Maybe mm -hmm. they have a plan to build a fortune, yeah? Maybe they have a plan to make one call and, uh, and retire. These impulsive <laughs> emotional thoughts. Yes. Uh, maybe they have any plan, any plan, but when it comes to actual trading, they don't have an edge they trust. And yeah. I believe yeah. that's why they just 
act impulsively and they just jump, let's say, from a tree to a tree, from a branch to a branch. Uh, today, I'm a reversal trader. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'm a Bollinger Band trader. After tomorrow, I'm a moving average trader, support resistant candlestick pattern, and so on and so forth. So what do you, uh, what do you encourage this majority part of the of, of traders uh, yeah we have uh, an illustration called the confidence circle so mm -hmm. new traders start the circle with magical thinking mm -hmm. and oh my gosh i can go into this make a lot of money fulfill my dreams um become financially secure have personal freedom trade from the beach and all that magical thinking mm -hmm. then of course sometimes it works. <laughs> In fact, the worst thing a new trader I hired, the worst thing that could happen to him is the first few days he'd make money <laughs> or she would oh make money. <laughs> but so the next thing is after they lose money is they are looking for a strategy mm -hmm. and uh, they test and, and test strategies, start executing it and makes money. So they have confidence in their strategy. And then, of course, the markets change its flavor. If you're a trend, tend to be a trend trader or a mean reversal trader, uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So then you lose confidence in your strategy. You try multiple strategies. And then from there, you move to market mood awareness. And this is where we know that if it, you have a trending market, uh, a trending crossover strategy is going to work. Duh. <laughs> if you are a mean reversal trader and you're trading within a channel, it's going to work. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> so the question is, what kind of market? So then you get good at looking at what, what the type of market, what strategy do I apply? And that's a real challenge. That's a, a big challenge, but certainly that's an improvement. And then finally, you get to the stage where I, as a master trader, can handle whatever is thrown at me. I am just here to have the market tell me what is going on. And I have confidence that I can sense changes, I can look at it, and I can react. I can take my losses easily. So there's a circle that most traders go through, and in the end is that master trader. So again, I think we talked about this earlier, is what is the master trader's mindset? Do you know what that is? Have you stepped into it? Have you felt it? And if you if you haven't visualized it and have concrete sense of what it is, your brain's not going to take you there. You're going to stay in this struggle. So that's why we have the visualization of master trader's home. And in this visualization, it steps you into that ex uh, just visceral experience so you know where you're going and your brain and your survival mechanisms and all the other issues can get in line and feel rapport in that state. Wow, wow. Question here. Uh, many traders, they have the belief that a master trader is a multi-million dollar trader. And I came across with this um, realization recently when I heard uh, to become a, a, a great trader, not exactly the word master trader, but I like the way you, you pronounce it, uh, that you need to have enormous amount of capital and, and people, they don't understand that it's a way of thinking. Oh boy, you just put <laughs> your finger right on it. It's a way of thinking. It's a context. It's a belief about yourself. It is an awareness of the markets. It's allowing all things to come in. It's allowing yourself to make what was called mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, which are really just learning experiences without judgment. It's a, it's a whole context of mindset, of market awareness. So in that context, you know, I have professional traders who I coach. They handle hundreds of millions of dollars. And some of them still have the mindset or very early in that confidence circle. The human brain is still the same. So what you're pointing out is so important because 
it isn't whether you have the hundreds of millions of dollars and those opportunities, but it is whether you have $10,000 in your account or you're trading uh, from a, um, I just dropped the word, uh, you know, um, where they give you the money and uh, and the rules to allow you to to trade. A prop uh, firm. A prop firm, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, at my age, I keep dropping words and I'm going, oh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, so if you're, or even in a prop firm. So the, the, the critical factor, Theo, you said is, you know, the mindset. And that happens through every stage all the way to being a, a professional trader with hundreds of millions. Wow. So first is the realization, the awareness and then you help people to build up and scale up and moving and moving until they trade with a free state of with a freedom let's say within an emotional freedom uh yes and that emotional freedom What's interesting about trading, as you have that emotional freedom, you step into the master trader's mindset, you have a strategy that is consistent over the large sample size. The most incredible thing is, as you increase your size, you increase your risk, you still run into psychological issues and mindset issues. So it's it's not like there's this journey in a train where you start here and you get there. <laughs> It's just continuous. And that's okay. the, you know, everyone says, oh, no. But I'm saying that's the beautiful thing about trading yep. is that, in fact, I have traders that say, you know, after working with us, they'll say, you know, we started out as trading. I realized that's not for me, but our work has changed my life with my family, my wife, uh, my career. And so because the same mental principles apply and the nice thing about trading is it concentrate them bang it gives you instant feedback it's not like i'm exactly. going to choose a career and three years later i find out if this is a, on a daily basis so i i think trading is not only one of the most challenging careers you can choose but one of the best careers you can choose because it gives you the feedback and it get, allows you to test your mental game continuously Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the, the, the reason I'm smiling and because <laughs> you took me now back into my past and it was like maybe the seventh month I was trading and I got uh, into a prop firm account. And at that stage is when I started going into the... Uh, the path of the trader's mindset and psychology. Mm -hmm. And then I discover how my beliefs, they were blocking me after exercises and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. How my beliefs and what I thought, and it was deep inside my mind that they were blocking me from moving to the next step and to the next step. And it's so, so true, so true. And Thank you so much for uh, sharing to with everyone because I'm sure people and I see uh, comments coming in and um, and I read the comments, okay? And at the end, it comes down to uh, what you just describing from the beginning, uh, and that's that's very um, very huge. And thanks thanks for for sharing that. Um, now a question is, okay, how do I know when to let my profits run and when to <laughs> cut my losses short? <laughs> of I course, I can tell you the answer my... to that one. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> I can give you a rule for that. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that would depend on the system. The question is, what is your emotional state during that? And if your emotional state is fearful, I'm going to 
give up my profits. I got to get out early, even if my system says not to. Well, that is the real question. It's it's not when to get out, is what is your mental state while that's going on? If you're into looking statistically over the large sample size, you just follow the system. And even if uh, you know you give back half your profits or all your profits because that's what your system says is better long term, that's you know what you do. So the real question is, what is your mindset and are you reacting emotionally? So I um I'm I'm not going to give you the secret of when to stay in and when to yeah, get yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. So do you um what do you have to say to the people like they pick up a direction in the market? Let's say they are long, they bought. And they make a, a mistake, a trading error, let's call it. It's not a personal mistake because we don't identify who we are and with our results in trading to feel worthy or not. It's just a trading error to, to buy when you didn't realize that the trend was moving downwards mm-hmm. and you just bought a retracement and not. Um, Uh, sorry, a bounce and not a retracement. And then the market, it's just continue moving downwards in a downtrend. And at some point, a trader says, oh my God, I had enough. I want to get out of here. I cannot take it anymore. And then once they they close the trade, they realize, oh my God, that was a downtrend. Why I couldn't see it? Why I was there for so long? Well, what I was hoping for. So, uh what do you uh suggest or what do you think are the reasons behind this stuff yeah when i built a trading firm on the floor if i made a mistake or one of my traders is the rule was just get out because what happens is if you're managing a mistake you're missing opportunities your brain now downshifts into its survival mechanism Mm -hmm. And in that survival mechanisms, we start making decisions that no longer serve us. So a mistake, just get out. It's it's that simple. Uh, No problem at all. Man, I have made so many trading mistakes (laughs) after a while. You know, it's like uh, writing the the wrong symbol on a ticket. Uh, Oh, my gosh. Or sometimes on the trading floor, you'd have out trades where I thought I bought and he thought I sold. And and all that, just a ton of mistakes. But you realize that they're just part of the business. You don't worry about them. You get out, you go on. And if you can look at it that way, because uh, you don't want to manage a mistake and downshift into your survival mechanism. Oh my God, that's the worst thing you can do. Oh, made a mistake. Boom. Mm -hmm. I just joined an improv group, which is a, a theater group where you don't have scripts, you just act. And we have a whole thing around making mistakes is make a mistake, move on, make a mistake, move yeah. on. And we have these exercises. And in fact, I'm <clears throat> writing a blog on how improv theater is actually a great training ground for traders because it teaches you to make a decision fast and move on, make a decision fast and move wow. on. Wow. And that's what traders need, right? <clears throat> yeah. But wow. we hold on, we hold on with hope, with fear. And oh my gosh, and when we get in that position, then the decisions we make are usually not optimal. Yeah. Which one would you identify as the, I'm not going to say a major trading error, but something that it's on the top five on the list, and that's more common to people they come to you, to traders? Which error do you think, or which mistake do you think? Um... Yeah, I've done a survey of thousands of traders. Oh, and... Very interesting. <laughs> and the issue that is on the top three has to do with taking losses. Wow. Oh, my gosh. We are so afraid of losing money that it just taking a loss and moving on is so challenging. 
So the pain of loss, I would say, drives many of the trading errors. And that's why dealing with the loss, we need to reframe our brain. So because it's it's such a primal, uh, prehistoric part in the lower part of our brain back there that says, if you lose that that deer, you know, on the savannas of Africa, or if you lose that fight with a neighboring tribe, you're going to die. So as a result, our brain in that survival mechanism delivers a <laughs> painful bit of loss. That's why wow. we divide trades into lousy and lucrative. A lucrative trade is one where you follow the system. Bang, you statistically make money. So we we avoid, we, it's kind of like a hack. We go around that pain of loss by redefining uh profit and loss into lucrative trades, according to the system, when we're at the right uh, mental attitude, we execute it, we allow it to play out, reach its target or stop. That's a lucrative trade. It's profitable because in the large sample size, they are. A lousy trade is where we're trading emotionally, we cancel the stop, we take profits too soon. And that, and once we get that in mind, well, then all of a sudden, the pain of a specific loss in a lucrative trade doesn't bother us anymore because it's lucrative. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So the the pain of of losing money does it has to do at any point with if I lost if a trade lost am I a loser? Oh boy. Is it any kind of association? And maybe that's why traders they behave that because they take it as something happens to me personally. Yeah, let's say you've got a job you don't like, it's not making the money you want, uh, your spouse is unhappy with you. Your uh, dad doesn't respect you. I'm going to exaggerate here. And you say some, and you have a friend who's trading and making money. Oh my gosh, I can be a winner. I can do this. So in that situation where you need trading success to fill a whole bunch of other holes in your heart, then what you say is every tick against you, every loss is a referendum on that huge emotional dream. So as a result, it's very difficult then to trade rationally and statistically. Wow. So we repeat the same errors over and over again because of the depth of the survival mechanism of the dream and how deep it goes into our identity. Wow. So from what you say and what I hear, <laughs> It's it's a new neural pathway a human has to uh, has to go has to acquire let's say has to develop in order to become to tap into the mastermind and become a master trader in terms of the way of thinking and the way of acting and uh, not necessarily the the initial capital let's say what you just brought up the neural pathways so if you can remember when you started driving a car so i'm going to age myself here you know <laughs> you, <laughs> the <laughs> stick shift on the column you know put the clutch in i'll yeah. bring it down to first <laughs> you know and then the car dies and i do it again well after a while with enough practice i can now drive down a freeway and have a philosophic conversation with a friend in the passenger seat, and it's all automated. Well, when we're trading, it's the same thing. Uh, the, the neural pathways just aren't there. In fact, we have old survival pathways that just, they just fire like that. But yeah. when we intentionally create new ones, then we repeat them, we repeat them again, and all of a sudden they become more automated. Mm -hmm. So the question is, when we first start trading, And, we're, and we want to connect the master trader's mindset neural pathways, 
it takes some intention because they're just here and they're not connected and you have to create some intention to that. Wow. And that's why we have uh, guided visualizations to help. And we also do live coaching while uh, a trader is coach uh, is actually trading. And what's amazing is when I'm there with a trader, just, just on auditorially and they're trading away, they don't downshift. <laughs> they stay in their master trader's mindset. Why? Okay. Because I'm making a break state. I'm constantly inviting them to their highest level self. And that invitation there, that, that other person there, it helps that first start. So when wow. we're start, and then once they they do that for an hour or two hours or three hours, now all of a sudden they know how to step into that state and stay in that state. Wow. Wow. And uh, approximately how long do you believe in some a, a trader needs to uh, acquire to tap into that uh, state of mind? Yeah. When I built a trading firm, I had one trader, Tyson, who was clerk for me for a while. He stepped into that mindset so smoothly, so easy. I mean, there was never any question. He mastered the pit. He mastered our theory. He stayed with it. No, You never saw him stress, no matter what the markets did or his position. So, wow. But he, he had a huge background in terms of his family, in terms of other challenges, life, and it was smooth. Other traders who, at the deepest level, we had the levels of change earlier, their identity of unworthiness that was so deep, it went back to their infancy. Mm -hmm. Well, that takes more work and more time to get down to that level, to bring that awareness there and to invite them into their worthiness. I have a phrase, I'm no longer religious, but to experience yourself as a child of God. And that phrase somehow means something and it creates an image of somebody that they are, are a child of God and they're worthy to stand on this earth with their shoulders back and their head up. So once there, we get down to that identity level and worthiness, then we can work up through the uh, mm. beliefs, the behaviors, the skills, and the knowledge. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that because, you know, it's not the, I believe that it's not the easiest and the most comfortable experience for someone let's say coming someone coming from an academic background i will use my own academic background so to make sure uh, i'm not gonna offend anyone <laughs> uh, i studied maths and physics all right and i used to be a teacher at some point as well for physics high school um mm. uh adults so coming from that background you feel a, a sense of pride sure you come into the market and because you think that you know uh the newton's law and the gravity law and physics and maths you need that you have everything to be a successful trader. Mm -hmm. And then you burn out an account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Oh my gosh, the market levels everyone. Yeah. So um, you, you, you said earlier that the traders, regardless what we are going through in our life, what sort of background we have, we have to um, acquire some ground floor uh, base, let's say, as per the market perspective, not as per what we think it's the market. Yeah, and when I was a retail broker with Merrill Lynch, the worst clients were doctors. Why? Because a doctor, when at least it used to be, probably not so much status anymore, 
But when a doctor walk into a room, I'm a doctor. And everyone would shift slightly with respect and change. He could change the world. He could save lives. He literally was a, a moving force that would shift the environment around him. So they would come to trading. I can change the markets. It was a subconscious belief. Yes. Yes. I have that power. And boy, they would just, they were the worst. They would just get hammered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh. yeah. So, what you're bringing up is really important. In fact, if you are there, if you're not an academic, you never finished high school, that uh, you didn't have any respect as a kid, you were bullied, you have all that. Yep. When you come to the floor, you have the same. Are the no other when you come to the floor, there's no floors anymore. <laughs> Shows you how old I am. When you come to the markets, you have the same opportunity as everybody else. And in fact, if you're street smart, you have more chance than the academic. Wow. Wow. So, guys, you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, all this time I was asking, uh, because the questions were a lot, I was just shifted from my questions and I was going mainly through the questions of the of the audience. And uh, we can, man, we can talk for hours and days oh, about yes. <laughs> mindset, trading mindset and so, so many other things. But unfortunately, time is pressing us. Oh, no. Yeah. We just got warmed up. <laughs> yeah. There are guys, we have another five. I will stretch it for five more minutes if that required. Please use this time and please make sure you type your questions on the chat box so I can ask them aloud. Um, okay. I'll and if you want, you can put up the final slide. And what that will do is it will guide people to an assessment that they can take. It's absolutely yes. free. And the assessment will start that awareness process. Where are the major issues that you face? And then we're giving everyone who listens to this, like, I don't know, my admin put it up. <laughs> She's crazy. But I think 70% off of our major compass course for traders. So if you want to put that up, uh, there you go. And if you go to... Uh, mindmusclesfortraders.com slash admirals. It's yep. all there. I will share the link, guys, with you so you can just click on the mindmusclesfortraders.com admirals and you can directly go there. Uh, let me grab the link. In the meantime, I will just go through some questions. We answered this. This one also, also, also. Okay, using some indicators, method to go in and out. <laughs> I'm just reading aloud the question. If you want to comment on anything um, about that one, understand it's not. Uh... Yeah, you know, methods to go in and out. Well, that's a very basic question. You know, that's a strategy issue. And uh, it certainly is beyond what we're talking about here. So what you're looking for is to start with, what I suggest is a really, really, really simple strategy. Yep. Moving cr uh, average crossover. Just get used to executing a strategy. In fact, I have an exercise where we create a simple strategy where you just learn to execute, 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 execute automatically without thinking about it. Because most traders, you know, they'll, 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 uh, double check themselves and they'll have, oh, is this really a good one? Is this, you know, do I have to wait? Oh, I'm late. And we we overthink it. So training yeah. for execution is really important. You know that I caught myself once when I used to uh, coach traders <laughs> a few years ago. Uh, and it was a gentleman who never uses specifically the CCI, Commodity Channel Index Indicator, Never. He just happened to hear it um, on, on the YouTube somewhere. Therefore, he inputted on the MetaTrader to validate the trading signal. 
Mm -hmm. And um, we, as human, we tend, we have, when we have that insecurity, as you mentioned earlier, what's in within inside and you want to validate and double check and double check and you are scared to execute. And it's like you want someone to push you to execute. And uh, this uh, behavior came up to, okay, I'm going to bring another indicator. Just if the indicator that I never use is it's going to confirm my signal, then I'm, I'm going in the trade. Yeah, we can we can bog ourselves down with all sorts of indicators. Yeah. The uh, you know, if you have a demo account or a simulated account, it's a great way to just practice execution on a simple strategy. If you do that for a week uh, and make it a strategy that has lots of trades in it. So you just get used to executing without question. Yeah. Another question is. What is the best solution when the market is complicated? Range, up and down, big news. What is the best solution when the market is complicated? Well, it depends on what the strategy is. I mean, if you, like the most money I've ever made trading was when there was chaos in the markets, was a lot of emotion in the markets. Uh, so that was my forte. When things are crazy, I do well. When things are boring, Rich doesn't do so well. <laughs> so, okay. but other people, when it's chaotic, they step back and say, oh, this isn't my market. I'm going to wait until we get a trend or get a channel or, or whatever the strategy is. So you really need to look were, at yeah. what? I think you were a mean reversion trader. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you're right. Really? You know, it's so hard for me to go with the trend. This really? psychologically still is, uh, because as a market maker, we were trained that when the retail is selling, we're buying. When they're buying, we're selling. We're always fading the market. And and that reward, uh, uh, signal reward, that it gets so well connected, it's uh, really challenging for me to go with the trend. I, I can do it, but I noticed that there's always this little... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like the car you prescribe at the beginning, like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly right. It, sometimes yeah. it stalls out, and then I don't go with the trend. <laughs> yeah, there is. Uh, I wouldn't say a question, but it's more like a comment, and it's nice to bring it up because you you will understand why there is a dilemma of by the way guys sorry i don't mention uh, the name of the person who wrote the comment because um, i want to keep your privacy in case you don't want your name to be heard sure. aloud so i respect that there is a dilemma of setting a stop loss say below a previous low which seemed reasonable i believe we are the trend is up. Mm -hmm. So to set up a stop loss below the previous low, only with capital letters, to have the market dips just enough yep. to take you out to oh, make a new low. Yeah. And then... Then goes back. Oh, that happens all the time. And it's so painful. Oh, my gosh. So and it happens. the markets, you know, and the, and, and the feeling is the market is out to get me. They know where the stops are. They take them out and reverse them. Well, you, that kind of thinking is very painful and it will remain painful. Instead is you put the stop in, it takes you out. So what? You are in the larger sample side, it's going to do well. If that gives you pain for that specific trade, that means you are depending on a specific trade to make you okay as a person. And that is very painful. And so you just need to look at statistically that sometimes they're just going to take your stop out and reverse it. Yes, they are. <laughs> so okay. what? <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a beautiful comment. So what shall I do with my PhD in business intelligence? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That was a great yeah. well Enjoy it. There's a, a lot of good experience there. And then you come to trading 
and you come to trading and say, hey, the market's going to teach me everything I need to know. Wow. Awesome. And another two questions because we are almost on time. Okay. What is, guys, sorry, I don't have the time because there is another webinar after, after this one, a scheduled one. Sorry, I apologize if I don't uh, read your question. What is the most important advice for someone who is initiating in trading? I assume that means new to trading. Yes. So if you're new to trading, look at the confidence circle we talked about. Do you have magical thinking? Is this going to solve your uh, financial problems? Is this going to help uh, give you status in the world or whatever it is? I anything that your trading success uh, depends on, that means that there's a lot of pressure on trading. So the most important for somebody to start it out is, is just to have fun. Look mm -hmm. at it as a computer game and just enjoy wow. it. Wow. And if you wow. and if you do that, start with a simulated or demo account and just have fun. And notice when you're not having fun. As soon as you're not having fun, as soon as you're under stress, as soon as you're leaning forward, as soon as your your muscles are tight, oh my God, what's going on? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Well, then just stop trading. Exactly. But then we go back to what you say, the beliefs and the intention. I'm going to trade to prove, to prove something to someone. And sorry for saying that, but many times, if we think about that, we are trying to prove to people they kind of, we feeling hurt by them, not necessarily in a positive emotional way. It's like to people we don't like that much and we try to prove them something. And that's even worse. It gets us to more and more. Uh, yeah. Uh, which, <laughs> yeah. If we need to prove something to ourselves and to others, the pressure on us in trading is more than most brains can handle. So thank you for pointing that out. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I think we are very, very on the edge with the time. Okay. Uh, Richard, it was a privilege and honor to have you on this Market Talk series by Admirals. Uh, we really appreciate the time and uh, you took to be with us today. I'm sure 100% everyone got uh, a lot of value out of this. So again, uh, myself and Admirals would like to thank you so much. We already share the link to your website. So please guys make the effort to go and do that exercise that uh, Richard pointed out. And yeah, any final word? From your side. Yeah. If you go to mind muscles for traders slash admirals, and I think I may have screwed up. It could be admiral. Try them both, the singular and the plural. Mind muscles for traders slash admiral, then the and or admirals, then there will be a um let's see if that works. Then there will be a uh an offer like 70% off. There it is. It is admirals plural. Then you can uh take the assessment and we can give you some special uh, information or you can just look at our blogs. Huge amount of free information on our blogs. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we're going to wrap up for tonight. Uh, again, one more time, Richard, would like to wish you to have a lovely day ahead <laughs> for us early evening <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for being here again we believe that you uh, gain incredible amount of value wherever you are in the world we would like to wish you to have a lovely day or evening ahead and i personally look forward to see you tomorrow on the live trading session at 7 30 gmt thank you so much and have a great time bye bye thank you theo